Hey, welcome back to the Instagram stories. Um, and today I want to talk about when I jumped into large format and why. So yesterday I talked about how I got into a medium format and um, after a while when you're shooting medium format, you start realizing that large format is like the thing you want to try out. So I saw a friend selling a Graflex and I jumped on it. It was a super speed graphic with a 135 Opter. And it's not exactly like this Graflex, which this is a bit something I got later on but it's very similar. Um, just folds in, it had a lens that went inside, it was a great camera, you could shoot out and about, you could set it up anywhere, fold it back in, and you could carry it in a small bag. Graflex cameras are great options to start, bellows are great, cameras are tough, they're cheap enough, like a Graflex in the States, they're like 300 bucks, like sometimes even less. Europe, it's a little harder, but yeah, this is the one with, um, shutter in the back so you can shoot like um shutterless lenses like the aero ektar which is what i have for this and yeah i had that camera for a long time i went on my honeymoon with that camera to new zealand i would shoot everywhere i love that 135 i got a 210 and i love that too and yeah basically if you're going to think about jumping onto large format you always have to think about that everything gets a little more expensive a little bit bigger and heavier but the graphics is a great package and soon enough, you know, you start looking into cameras and um, I think an Ebony came into like large format forum or something like that and I jumped on it. I just, Ebony was like, or is one of the best camera makers or just stopped making cameras, but one of the best camera makers and I, it was the best thing you could buy. So I bought a 4x5 Ebony, I love that thing. But soon enough, I started realizing my pictures, you know, landscapes, I'm not that good. I don't like my landscape, landscape pictures. And I decided to get rid of it and go for architecture, which is what I really like and I would love to shoot more. And um, I started with a Cinar uh, 4x5, then I started going 8x10. I bought a Campbell Legend. If you guys don't know what the Campbell Legend, you can go to The Art of Photography, Ted Forbes. In every video, he's got one behind. He's done some videos about it. It's heavy and big, but if you have a studio, it's awesome. I carry that in the car. I used to put my seatbelt around it to actually travel with a Campbell uh, Legend and I shot that a lot and I decided 8x10 was awesome but I could not enlarge it and then my final idea with taking pictures is not scanning but printing pictures. So I thought you know what, the bigger the better, I'll go for a final print and I found an 11x14. So I these cameras don't come out very often but when they come out you gotta kinda of take your chance. So I'm gonna set it up here so you guys can see how big it is. And um, I jumped onto this Shamanix 11 by 14 from someone that was selling a complete package, uh, film holders and all, which um, in ultra large format, the film holders are the hardest thing to find. So if you guys ever decide to go ultra large format, remember that, try to get yeah, it is huge. That's the beast. Um, it's actually so big that it even moves the tripod head, even though it's heavy duty. But you guys have to find a complete package. If you don't find the camera on the, um, the film holders and or lenses, try to find them before because they're not easy to find. People like Chamonix do make these film holders brand new, so you can buy them, but they're not cheap. I think it's like $600 a piece. Um, probably super dark because it's all black. But yeah, this is basically my Chamonix uh, by 14. And I decided um, this was the way for me to go, you know? I wasn't gonna start enlarging uh, an eight by 10 enlarger is hard to come by. And I decided, you know, I'll just go straight to contact printing. I was trying to do architecture and um, how do you call it? Carbon printing by contact. So, I got 11 by 14, I loved it, it's amazing. Film is expensive, but you don't shoot as much, you're a lot more picky with your shots. And um, yeah, thinking I'll never find a 8x10 enlarger. And soon enough, someone called me and said, hey, I got 11 by, I mean, 8x10 enlarger, do you want it? And uh, you don't say no to that offer. So I went straight to get that 8x10 and I started having an 8x10 enlarger, 11x14 camera and things start getting kind of crazy and hectic. So I'm going to answer a quick question. How does Bird uh, differ with contact printing? Similar? Um, 
Contact printing and dodging and burning is pretty much the same. It's just this printing, just close your aperture and you can dodge and, um, and burn exactly the same. But yeah, contact printing and carbon printing is not an option. You have to go straight for your negative. So you want to do a great negative. And um, so the story is that I got an 8 by 11 by 14. I started having an 8 by 10 enlarger and I could enlarge 8 by 10. So that meant I couldn't use, well, I had an excuse not to use this that much. And I was shooting uh, 8 by 10 on a Cinar architecture and I love it. And then, I don't know, I bought like a Wetham uh, 8x10 to try field photography once again. And yeah, I'm not a field photographer. I went out with the camera, it was awesome, super lightweight. It clamps down to nothing. And uh, I decided that was not my thing, sold it. And then I started um, shooting 4x5 a bit more because it's more affordable and it's easier. Color has gone crazy in 8x10, which is what I used to shoot all the time. And then I started shooting with one of these. This is a 4x5 Shaman X. Um, you probably know what camera this is. I have it on my Instagram quite a bit. And this is a great camera to shoot. Um, I think I put the thing, no. This is when you don't remember how you use your tripod. Okay, so this is awesome little camera. Lightweight, easy to use. Folds in a backpack, you can carry it. It's not a graphics, but it's a great camera. It does a lot of movements. It weighs like a kilo and a half. So now, yeah, now I'm full of cameras. I got my 4x5, which I love and I carry everywhere I can. I have my 8x10, which is still a Cinar. And that thing's a beast, but it works for architecture so nice. But now I'm deciding to maybe get a Chamonix 8x10 as um, the Cinar uses its own Pelican case and film holders and everything is just humongous. And yeah, I try to keep with this for contact printing, 8x10 for enlarging and 4x5 for enlarging, shooting color with 4x5 and 8x10, black and white with 11x14. Uh, and yeah, basically that's how I jumped. I just saw an opportunity, started buying it, and I've made a video about it, but large format is probably cheaper now than ever. So if you guys wanna try it out, Lenses and cameras are very, you know, inexpensive compared to what they were maybe 10 years ago or 15 years ago when, you know, these lenses were sold new. This is a Nikon 210. This is a Computar um, 270. Hard to find great lenses. And yeah, so that's how I got into large format. I can't say I regret it. I can say I probably spent more money than I should have. But that's what happens with cameras that you start seeing them and you start wanting more and seeing lenses at cheap prices. But yeah, if you really want to get into large format, like someone asked, and that's the whole question I was answering, go for our Graflex 4x5. This is a great package. Nowadays, you still find them in good um, condition, used, and the lens folds in. It's really nice. I have the Graflex lens, I'm telling you, the 135 Opter. It was a great lens. It did like, I mean, it does like 97% of what you need. If you guys want to check out someone's work, there's a guy on Instagram called Rafael Gonzalez, I think, who shoots skateboarding with a Graflex and I think a Graflex lens, and his results are awesome. This guy travels the world with this little camera, and he makes it, you know, work for him. So if you're not shooting architecture of macro, get a Graflex, start learning. Once you've learned how to out, you know, work this camera, then maybe move to something like a field camera. But don't think it's expensive. You will need special film holders, you will need new tanks, but it's all easy to find. There's information online on YouTube or Instagram or just forums. So yeah, that's basically my story with large format. As you see, I got all the way to 11 by 14. I don't recommend you guys go this big, it just gets, crazy heavy, crazy expensive, and um, just sad. It's just sad not to use it enough. It gets too much. Color, I was saving for color, and Keith Canham contacted me like, hey, there's a color order happening now. And it was $1,500 for 50 sheets. So yeah, that's how hard that is to shoot. And uh, I couldn't buy it, of course, and I still stuck to black and white. I'm shooting x-ray film which is very affordable. And um, that's what I recommend if you're gonna go ultra large. You can get x-ray film up to 14 by 17. 
So yeah, someone's asking, uh, what subject are you shooting with your 4x5 these days? 4x5, mostly um, architecture. I'm trying to use this for architecture. Sometimes my kids, they don't stop a lot. So mostly architecture. I don't like landscape. My photography, landscape photography, that's not my picture. Um, stinks. So yeah, I'm shooting normal stuff with a 4x5. This is what I'm using for a, pro a project of portraits, which I'm practicing. I'm trying to go 1-1. One, one. If you guys see my Instagram pictures, there's like four or five pictures that go. I posted a picture of me shooting with this, doing one-to-one. -one. It goes all the way to like, I think like 800 millimeters. And I use a 360 Nikon F6.5. Uh, and shoot one to one. I want to get like uh, frames that are like their face, like a part of their face, not even their whole head in there. And it's amazing. The detail on that on contact prints will be amazing. I will be doing the contact prints and probably shooting it on video for YouTube and Instagram. So you guys can see how I work and how messy and sloppy I am. So yeah, that's basically my story with large format. If you guys want to ask uh, more questions about either starting with a 4x5, what to buy, or if you want to really go into heavy machinery like 11x14 or bigger, I can help you out as I've looked into a lot of lenses and equipment and where to buy things. It's not so easy as these things are interchangeable. So this lens will work here, this will work here, but this won't cover that. So yeah, just keep on asking me um, any questions you have. Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow. I will be traveling to Madrid. I was thinking of doing a traveling and film. I've covered that on a previous YouTube video. But if you guys want to see how I travel with film, it's very easy. I just put it through my hand luggage and uh, get an x-ray and it still works fine. I'll be shooting for an event I'm doing called Film and Beer which I started, it's www.filmandbeer.com, which is basically um, traditional photography, or analog photography, whatever you want to call it, and people having beer, that's all, just meetups. So yeah, I'll try to shoot some video there, um, maybe go live if it's not too intimidating with all the people there, and um, I'll share that with you guys, and I'll be shooting these uh, daily videos from Madrid. So yeah, thanks for watching, and remember, you want to start, start with the Graphics. They're one of the best ooh, options out there.